Happy Thursday. I told you yesterday I was going to have a blue day today. Today's blue. Yesterday was orange. Day before was red. Today is blue. Tomorrow is a darker blue with flowers. Hmm? Say this with me. We're talking about how to get prayers answered. How to get results. How to pray and get results every time. You can get results every time. Hmm? Glory to God. Say this with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. The best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart, getting smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Great things are coming my way. Everything always works out for me. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Pastor Jim is the ultimate pastor. Because I get results. Glory to God. Hmm? Call me today when you do your offerings and donations. Tomorrow is offering day, but a lot of people will do them on Thursday. So whenever you do them, make sure you call, because I don't bless the offering. I bless the people when they do their offering. That's how uh, Melchizedek and Abraham did it. So that's what I do. Amen. Are you getting anything out of this? Has this been good? I want you to get your prayers answered. I want you walking around, believing that at any time, you can get a prayer answered if you need to, or if you want to. You can do that. Now, you may need some help to do that, but that's what I'm here for. If you're a partner of this ministry, and all we ask of our partners is that they help support us, that they pray for us, and that they watch the videos. If you're a partner of this ministry, you have access to me. And I am always here to pray with you, or to speak over you, or to speak the blessing over you, whatever. And I believe that, that the tithe especially is supposed to, the person when they do their tithe is supposed to be blessed. The blessing and the tithe go together. I even wrote a book about it. The blessing and the tithe. There is a connection between the blessing and the tithe. Some people will tithe for years and years and years and never get blessed financially. It's because somebody is not speaking that blessing over them in faith. I'll tell you what, when somebody spoke that blessing over us in faith, I said to Mary, I said, that's where we tithe. We've been tithing there for 11 years and we have become rich to the person who blesses us. We have become rich. We're becoming just like that person. And that person is rich. Glory to God. We're becoming just like that person. You will become like the people you hook up with and the people you listen to. Don't, don't, don't hook up with somebody who's broke, who's sick. There's a lady come into our church one time, her and her husband both sick and broke, and she wants to take over our church and minister in our church and teach the people. I said, I said, these people are further along than you are. They're not sick and broke. They have faith. She doesn't have any. You can't teach in our church if you don't have any faith, please. Because the people in our church do. They got a lot of faith. Some of those people in there, a lot of those people, can make things happen. Glory to God, huh? We're talking about how to get your prayers answered every time. How to pray. Do you know if you pray the right way, you're going to get your prayers answered? Did you know that God does not pick out prayers to answer. He doesn't pick out prayers to answer. Do you know why? Because that's just the way he is. Thursday. God does not pick out prayers. Pick out prayers. Intro. We're talking about it out of this book here. I wrote the book on prayer. It's not a big book. It's not a big book. It is exactly, we're even with the information about the author, 59 pages. 
59 pages. But in 59 pages, and it's not even small print, it's easy to read. But in these 59 pages, it will show you how to get a prayer answered. How to get all of your prayers answered. All of your prayers answered. You can get all your prayers answered. God will answer your prayer. But God does not pick out prayers to answer. Somebody, somebody they always say, sometimes God says yes. Sometimes God says no. Sometimes God says, maybe so. How many of you know that's wrong? God never says no. God never says no. Why God never says no? Hmm? We'll talk about that tomorrow. That's on Friday. Why God never says no? God does not pick, God does not look at the prayers and say, well, let's see here. Goes through the prayers. Let's answer this one. Okay, which of you angels need something to do? Go make that prayer happen. Let's throw them again. Finally, it comes to one. So now well, let's take care of this one. Need another angel. Who's next? How do you know that doesn't happen? That never happens. Do you know there, there's a book called The Courts of Heaven? The Courts of Heaven. I've got a copy of it. I think right over here. <clears throat> the Courts of Heaven. Do you know this is one of the most unscriptural books I've ever seen. Don't buy it. It's a waste of time. He wants you to think that if you're going to get your prayer answered, you got to make your case in heaven. Nothing could be further from the truth. Like, Jesus is our advocate. The devil is our adversary. God is the judge. And you're going to stand there in court in the courts of heaven and you're going to make your case and God is going to render a decision whether or not he will answer your prayer. Nothing could be further from the truth. There is no. Now, there is a court in heaven, that's for sure. The devil talks to God. He presents his case. And God tells him yes or no. You can see that in Job chapter 1. But it's not about individual prayer. It's not about prayers. It's about giving the devil access to people. The devil makes a, he makes his case to God about whether or not he should have access to your life. If he gets access to your life, he's going to cause destruction. And if there is a reason, he will get access to your life. If that has happened to you, you call me and I'll make it stop. Because if the devil has gotten access to your life and caused you to be sick or broke, it can be stopped. Through the power in the name of Jesus, and I know how to do that. I do that for people all the time. Why do you think some of you are so blessed? It's because I got the devil out of your life. Amen. Huh? But God does, he does not make a decision on which prayers to answer. No, God is a God of black and white. He doesn't make a decision about which people to save. He doesn't make a decision about which people to heal. Well, I knew one guy one time was so angry at God because his mother had died. 
I mean, this guy was angry. Then he got cancer. He had prostate cancer. And it had spread to his bones. And he had no faith at all that God would heal him. He went around the country chasing doctors and chasing new procedures. His wife would call and say, Oh, Pastor Jim, we had a praise report. We found another doctor. We found another doctor. He'll see us in two weeks. We just got to sit in a hotel room and wait. They spent all their money. They were like the women, woman with the issue of blood. She spent all her doc money on doctors. These people spent all their money, and that woman was well off. And she spent a lot of her, of her estate, a lot of her trust fund on doctors for her husband. And in the end, he died a horrible death. But he was angry because God did not heal his mother. Then there was another guy, a bishop in a large church up north. And he got prostate cancer. He had exactly the same kind of cancer that this guy had. And it was prostate cancer that had spread into his bones. It was in his spinal cord. And he had his executive assistant get a hold of me. And then he talked to me. He And they wanted me to come up there. They got me an airplane ticket. So I flew up there. And I was in his office with him that night. And he said to me, he says, you know, now this is a wonderful man. He says, you know, he says, I'm not afraid to die. But I am somewhat afraid of the process. I don't want to die of this cancer. That's a horrible way to die. I've seen so many people die of cancer. And he had. He said, I don't want to die this way. I said, you're not going to. And he got healed. Simply because he did not chase all over the country looking for doctors. He called me. And then he told his church that night. Now, he didn't know he was healed yet. Because I had just ministered to him in his office. But he came out to introduce me. We came out. And there's thousands of people in this church, huge church. He said, I brought Pastor Kibler here because there is so much sickness. And his entire church got healed that night through the power of God. Mm. God didn't decide to heal him and let the other guy die. No, this bishop got healed because he believed I could do it. He had watched my videos and heard about me and checked me out. I mean, this guy did a thorough investigation on me before he brought me up there. He told me that. And he got healed. He got healed. Glory to God. The difference was one of them believed God, the other one didn't. God did not decide to heal that bishop and let the other guy die. No. No. The other guy died because he put his faith in the doctors. The doctors couldn't heal him. Sometimes doctors can help you. We believe in doctors. We go to doctors. But when the doctor says he can't do anything for you, and you know you got something the doctors can't handle, call me. Because the power of God can handle anything. God doesn't pick out prayers to answer. No, there's no court case in the courts of heaven. If you do it the right way, you'll get your results every single time. Please share this video with everybody you know. Nobody needs to die of sickness or disease as long as I am here. When I'm gone, and one of these days, if Jesus tarries, I will be gone. When I'm gone, then I don't know what to tell you. But as long as I'm here, nobody needs to stay sick. You call me. I'll show you the power of God. I'll use the power of God to get your prayers answered.